All right, so this section, uh, chapter 2, section 5, we're talking about literal equations and formulas. Um, the reason we're going through this, the whole point of it is um, we're actually working with everyday formulas that uh, that scientists use, that anyone that's doing statistics is using. Um, and so what it comes down to is if I'm doing a whole bunch of solving for one type of variable, I don't want to have to plug in everything and then have to keep solving for that variable. If I can solve the equation first and then plug in and simplify from there. So that's that's the gist as to why we need to learn this. It's because if you are to go into the field of science or physics or engineering, uh, it just becomes easier if you solve for one or solve the first equation and then plug and chug from there as opposed to having to solve 50 or so equations for the information you're given depending on your data source. So example one, um, we are given the equation 10x plus 5y equals 80. And our goal is to solve for y. And just because there's an x doesn't mean we can't go through this. We can still use these same, we're still going to use all the same properties. The fact that this first one is given to us. Um, I want to get y by itself. So that means I have to move the 10x to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. Now, if you notice, I put it off to the side from my 80. And the reason for that is because since it has an x, it cannot be combined with the 80 because they are not like terms. So keep in mind we can only combine like terms. So I have 5y equals a negative 10x plus 80. From here, I still don't have y by itself. Oh, wait. We forgot this I can make this statement because we use the subtraction property of equality in order to make that equal equation here the equivalent equation now in order to get y by itself if right now I have five times y so I'm gonna have to do the opposite and divide and when I divide over here I have to divide everything on the right hand side so that 10x is going to be divided by 5 and the 80 is going to be divided by 5. So now I have y equals a negative 2x plus, goes in there, once, 16. So negative 2x plus 16. And I've got to that because we use the division property of equality. So we're using all the same properties, but I still have both variables in my equation. So what is different from before is before we would get x or y equals a number. Now we're still getting to where we have variables. And so now I have y equals a negative 2x plus 16. And so this would make it easier. And in this case, this um, would make it easier to graph, make it easier to um, continue uh, finding. You know, for every x value, I could just plug in multiply by negative 2 and add 16 and I would have y and not have to do all that solving steps. Um, according to the problem in the book, x is the number of pizzas and y is the number of sandwiches. Um, model the problem and solve it. So then it asks for us to solve for how many sandwiches can you buy if you buy three pizzas. And so if I buy three pizzas, then that means because pizza was x, x equals pizza, then I'm just going to plug it in. y equals a negative 2 times 3 plus 16. So we have y equals a negative 6 plus 16. Negative 6 plus 16 means that we can buy 10 sandwiches if we buy 3 pizzas. Um, 
So if x equals 3, that's why we, where we got that one. And then the problem says, but what if we bought six pizzas? And so again, we would just plug in, if x is 6, y equals negative 2 times 6 plus 16. So now we have y equals a negative 12 plus 16. So we can only buy four pizzas. Or not pizzas, sandwiches. Wrong. No. There, oh, my pen sometimes wants to work the way I want it to, and sometimes doesn't. Four sandwiches. So then I'm going to put this out here for what what values of x do not exist for this problem if we're talking sandwiches and pizzas uh, and for what values of y would we not be able to to work with and just kind of think about that um, because that's, those are things you need to think about as you're doing problems because there are times that it doesn't make sense and you need to double check stuff like we can't have negative sandwiches. That wouldn't make sense. All right, moving on to the next example here. All right, so our example two uh, is if we have a literal equation with only variables. So say ax minus bx equals c. All right, so this one has a special this is really special. I have x with both of these, so um, I'm going to undo the distributive property. So remember, distributive property allows us to multiply to both sides. So uh, when we undo the distributive property, that's called factoring out the greatest common factor, which in our case is going to be the x. So we're going to have x and then parentheses a minus b equals c. So if we were writing out our reasons, that first one's given, um, I would write here factor greatest common factor. So x was the biggest thing, or the only thing, common to ax and bx, so we factor it out to the front. Um, if you're still trying to figure out, basically we are undoing the distributive property if that helps you visualize more. Now, I'm wanting to, I guess I forgot to say this, we are wanting to solve for x. It helps if we know what variable we're solving for. So in order to solve for x, now that we have x by itself, we are going to divide both sides by a minus b. And so then I get that x equals c, well, yep, c, over a minus b, and that is because of our division property of equality. So this is our final answer. Then I can take any c, a, and b that it may give me and plug in and solve for x, depending on what c, a, and b are. But it makes it easier to find x. Um, so once again, the x comes to the front because it was common to both the ax and the bx. So we divide it, or yeah, we factor it out to the front, leaving us with x equals the quantity a minus b, or in other words, undo the distributive property. Because we want x, we're going to divide both sides by a minus b, and so that gives us that x is equal to c divided by a minus b. So this table of formulas are common formulas that you're going to use in Math Excel uh, within our own uh, work. So what I would do right now is pause the video and make sure that you copy this down. Um, if you're if you understand the variables and what the variables mean, you don't have to copy that third column. Uh, but it is if it is something that you're not used to or it's a new formula, it, I would again pause and copy down what you, what you need. If it's just the name and the formula, perfect. They're your notes. Do what you need. 
um, I am going to now move on. Um, our last example today is so example three. We're going to be working with the formula. Um, the problem says, what is the radius of, radius of a circle with a circumference of 64 feet? Round to the nearest tenth and use 3.14 for pi. Um, so I'm just going to put this out here because, yes, if I am just doing it for one problem, it would make sense to just plug in and solve for what I need. Where would this be useful if I'm doing something with a whole bunch of uh, circumferences and I'm comparing uh, their radii or I'm needing to find the radius, then it is much easier to find R once and keep plugging in different circumference values and just solving for our radius from there. So we're going to go ahead and solve uh, for R. So we want to find R. And we're going to do that first. So in order to get r by itself, this one's pretty easy. All of this is multiplication. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 2 pi. And when I do that over here, they divide out to 1. And so now I have that circumference divided by 2 pi equals our radius. And so that would be like a step 1. Now, if I were doing... Um, the study or whatever, or comparing, then from here what I would do is I would then just make a table and I would put in every circumference and find my radius value. When I when you're typing this into the calculator, so um, we have a circumference for this one of 64 feet. When I type this into the calculator, the fact that r equals 64 divided by, if you are typing all of this at once, you need to make sure that 2 pi is in parentheses. And the reason I say that is remember your calculator is going to do order of operations which says to divide and multiply from left to right. So if you're typing into the calculator 64 divided by 2 pi, it's going to take 64 divided by 2 and then multiply by pi. So by putting the parentheses around it we're saying multiply first and then divide 64 by the value of 2 pi. Now, we've got to keep in mind we are using the fact that pi is 3.14 as an approximate, and then we're going to plug this into our calculator. So when I plug in 64 divided by 2 times 3.14, and again all of that within parentheses when I put it into the calculator, I come up with an answer of 10.191, and it keeps going because pi is an infinite number, um, although I didn't use pi, but it does still keep going. It says round to the nearest tenth, so that's one decimal place, so that means our radius is approximately 10.2 feet. And so again, from here, if I had another um, problem, and so maybe instead of just circuit circles, we're looking at the circumference of pumpkins, and we're trying to compare several pumpkins and their radii, or from there we make it into the diameter, whatever it may be. Um, but it would be much easier to just take the circumference divided by 2 times 3.14 over and over again than it would be to to say that we're solving it. And at some point, you being as smart as you are, would do that in your head anyway. The fact that, oh, it's just circumference divided by 2 pi. We're just now writing it out. Um, so, until I see you again.